Welcome back. It is always a good day when I wake up, give thanks, realize that today is the day that I get to step out in my little studio and record a show and speak to you about a topic, many topics that I find very intriguing. Um, this is the next room. The next room is about death, where death is dinner conversation. So let me kind of clarify that. I feel that it is a very loving topic. Much like we celebrate the birth of a beautiful new baby, we should celebrate the life that is transcending and leaving the earthly form to go to the next room. So we talk about anything that deals with death, death, dying, grief, huge one, grief. Uh, it was a tough year, 2022. Um, a lot of people leaving the planet in very interesting ways. Um, green burial practices, fascinated by those. So I have guests on that talk about that. Um, cultural traditions surrounding death, especially in other countries, they do different and interesting, cool things. They celebrate it a lot more than we do here in the United States. Um, anything about death, dying, grief, hospice care, and of course, one of my all-time favorites, the afterlife. So thank you so much for being here. It means a lot to me because when you do a podcast, you don't really know. You're in a little teeny studio, in my case, in Southern California, San Diego to be exact. And uh, you don't really know who's listening. I mean, at the very beginning, I had one listener, my mother-in-law. Thank you, Francis. Um, but as the podcast has grown, and now I'm on this platform called Megaphone, where you can actually see the back end, you can see the cities and the people that are listening and the regions and the countries. Um, and it's fascinating. And I just want to say thank you. It means a lot to me because the more the show grows, the more listeners I have, the more downloads and people sharing it and rating it, the better it is because it grows and then more advertisers can come in, which helps the network, um, so on and so forth. That's kind of how it works. So uh, I just wanted to take a moment and thank these cities that have really shown up for me. Traverse City, Michigan. Now, if you've never been to Traverse City, the next time you go to Detroit, fly into Metro, get on the 75, head north. It is a beautiful, kind of a magical place on the Grand Traverse Bay. Really, really gorgeous city. So Traverse City has been showing up for me in my podcast in a big way. And I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm also a Michigan girl. So it gives me great joy to see that people in Michigan are listening. Um, Los Angeles, California, big market. Thank you to all my LA peeps. I appreciate it. Uh, Medford, Oregon, Oregon, another gorgeous state. Uh, I've been to several places in Oregon, Portland, um, Bend, and Eugene, never Medford, but Medford, thank you for showing up for me. Germantown, Maryland is a big market. Um, Pell City, Alabama, brand new. I just found out that Pell City was was on board. So thank you. Uh, Travelers Rest, South Carolina. What can I say? I love you guys. Big market for me and Travelers Rest. East Falmouth, Massachusetts, another new one. And outside of the country, I would have to say Australia is showing up in uh, just waving the Australian flag. Perth, Melbourne, and Sydney. And I'm going to tell you a little later on, I'm going to have a guest uh, coming up this year um, from Melbourne. Her name's Callista, and she's got a fascinating story about her mom and grief and loss and kind of pushing through to the other side. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to the Next Room podcast. And I just wanted to say I appreciate all of the great reviews I'm getting on this, the book. So if you haven't read the book yet, The Next Room, Jane Asher, Betty Asher, I co-wrote it with my beautiful mom in spirit. Um, and she really has a lot to say. She has given me some of the best, I wouldn't even say some, the best advice, life advice. Um, and I do have to tell you, I pick it up daily because I'm human, because I kind of get stuck and the ego takes over and I start being very human, 
uh, and stuck in my ways and all that good stuff. I have to pick it up and I, I'll say, what do you have for me, mom? And then her words just come flying out and she shares this very beautiful advice about getting out of your own way and about being kind and how to handle grief and how to be gracious and really what is waiting for us when we leave this earthly vessel and we move on because we're having this great life experience, but what is waiting for us in the next room? And it is pretty remarkable because um, I have been shown that we continue to go on. Our consciousness expands. Um, we're able to learn. You know, we learn a lot here. And what we don't learn here, we'll get those lessons in the next phase, which is the next room. And so um, I'm super grateful to my mom that she would agree to write this book with me and um, it's been such a labor of love. Oh, boy. What do I want to say to you? First of all, it is my first show of 2023. And I thought, you know, I'll just do a little reset. I'll let you know who I am, what I feel, where I want the show to go, and also kind of give you a little heads up about some of the fascinating guests that are coming up for you this year. And basically to say thank you. So um, the show is going to be featuring some incredible people. I've reached out to my friend, Jan Warner. Jan is someone that I met through Facebook. Jan started a Facebook page called Grief Speaks Out to help her with her grief over the loss of her husband, Artie. And she started the page just basically as therapy for herself. And it grew and it grew and it grew. And she now has two and a half million people. She manages the page. It's a safe space for people that are grieving. It's really beautiful. And she also has a wonderful book called Grief Day by Day. I love Jan. She's become a dear friend of mine. She's agreed to come back on the show in the new year and uh, talk to us. So Jan's coming up. I mentioned Callista. Callista is from Down Under. She's an Aussie. Um, Callista's going to come on the show, and she has a really tragic story. I mean, her mom was in a home in um, Canada, and I don't want to spoil it because I'm going to have her tell you the whole story, but her mom, you know, it was during COVID, and she was unable to be with her mom. And so there's just a lot of, there were some shenanigans around the facility she was in. It's been well documented, and she's going to share with us her journey and her grief and how she is now pushing through and connecting with her mom and the signs and messages that she's getting. So Callista is going to come on the show. Jacob Cooper is going to come on the show. I'm really happy. I've been wanting Jacob to come on ever since he wrote his first book. His second book is, is coming out. Um, and he's going to come on the show and really just a lovely man. He had an NDE when he was a young boy and he wrote his first book. Um, and the second book, Jacob's Ladder, is coming out. And um, I haven't read it yet. I'm super excited to read his story and then I'll have him come on the show. Um, and you'll really love him. He's really pretty magnificent. Um, Pamela Osley is going to join me. I haven't talked to Pam in a long time because Pam helped co-author um, and help translate the messages that I was getting through mom with The Next Room. And she was a big part of the book until she told me that mom told her, Jane, you can do this. You don't need me. So I love Pam. Um, Pam has now since retired from doing personal readings, but she's moved on to all kinds of cool things in deeper consciousness and evolution and um, I don't know mega universes, parallel universes, all kinds of cool stuff. So Pam is going to come on the show. Pam, Jan, Callista, Jacob. Oh, wait till you hear about this one. Donna Ashworth. All right. So Donna, I'm reading this woman's stuff on Facebook. I'm like, she's brilliant. It's the She writes the way that every writer wishes they could write. She writes beautiful poetry. So she put out three books last year, Life, love and loss. And a lot of the stuff on loss really pertain and I can share over to the Next Room Facebook page because, you know, it's all about that. It's about death, death, dying, grief, afterlife, all the good stuff. And Donna writes beautifully. So I reached out to her on her post because I kept sharing her stuff and she would thank me. And I said, Donna, 
would you come on the next room? And she agreed. So Donna Ashworth is going to be on, um, I think, sometime in February of 2023. And you will know because I will send out all kinds of notices and let you know. Um, super, super prolific, beautiful woman. Um, and she's really here to share her gifts and an interesting backstory on how she got started. She was just writing, you know, again, during COVID. So many writers came out of the closet during COVID and um, and it turned into a magnificent career. And she's now a New York Times bestselling author. So, so many good shows coming up for you in 2023. And I just wanted to take this first show of the year and thank you for everything. Thank you for the great ratings. Um, thank you for the amazing reviews that you've done on The Next Room, on the book, on Amazon. They help so much. An independent author, you know, you put your heart on your sleeve, right? You put it out there. And then once it's out there, you really don't know unless somebody sends you an email, picks up the phone. You know, friends and family have been wonderful. But other than friends and family, people that you don't maybe know personally, you don't really know how you've affected them unless they let you know. And so many now have told me with a resounding five-star reviews um, how they feel about the Next Dream book and what it meant for them, not only helping them to connect with their loved ones that have left, but also to help them and give them hope through their grief. Um, because after my mom left, I mean, undeniably the closest relationship I've ever had. She's been gone 12 and a half years now. And I had never felt anything like that before. I had had, you know, a few losses in my life, but nothing that deep. For the first year, I don't even remember really the first year. It was almost like I was swimming in a vat of pudding. It was like I didn't have a big uh, appetite not sleeping well, um, not really happy, not really wanting to do much or go anywhere. Uh, it was deep, deep grief, and I had never experienced it. So I didn't really know, like, once I went through it, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's grief. That's crazy. And I don't know about you. Some experts say, oh, get over it, you know, grieve for a year. I think that's horse hockey. I don't think we ever get over losing a loved one or having to say goodbye to their physical set, you know, uh, physical side of them. I believe it's directly tied with how much love we have for that individual and we grieve our entire life. We do kind of, I don't want to say get used to it, but for me, grief almost became like a comfortable favorite old sweater. Um, and, you know, I don't cry every day now. You know, there was, I cried all the time before. Um, so it's become more part of me and I've learned some coping mechanisms with it. And I have a lot more happiness and share more of the the good memories and the fun stories. And I toast my mother now. And of course, my dad and my sister and my best friend uh, on their birthdays. And I sing to them. So I, I'm not mired in that sadness anymore. But don't let anyone tell you to get over it. There is no getting over it. It's just something you work with and you do it in your own time frame and you grieve your own way. It's a very, very personal journey that I will always honor. Um, I honor everyone's grief. So I just needed to say that. Um, as I was doing my Christmas cards this past year, I was blown away at how many people no longer are here in the physical sense. And my mom years ago had said, you know, write everything in pencil because then you can erase when they move. And so as I'm going through my address book and all these people have transcended, they're now in the next room, I cannot erase their address or their names from my book. And I thought, why would I erase them? This way, every year, because I love to go old school and send out Christmas cards, I'm going to bring them into my consciousness and send them love and maybe have a great memory of my time with them and sort of send them a little Christmas card from me, from my heart, from my thoughts instead of an actual physical card. So um, I love that. I 
I'm happy that I have no, I'm not compelled to get rid of their names. I'm not compelled to clean up my address book. I really don't care. I mean, it's it's my book. It's not messing with anything. And it it keeps them and their memories alive with me. Um, so that was uh, an observation I had. It seemed to me a lot of people were leaving. It was a difficult year. A lot of people chose to um, to leave. You know, they chose to end their lives for whatever reason. And that always brings me just uh, like great pain. And I don't know these people. No one close to me died through suicide. But so many people did um, in the public eye. And I always stop and just pause and I look at their pictures and I think to myself, I always think why, but then I know why. It's it's mental illness. It is so deep and so pervasive and so many people are in so much pain um, to physically remove yourself from this planet. Uh, you have to be in incredible pain. So I guess I would just like to say, reach out. Um, if you are feeling sad and you're feeling really out of it and you don't feel understood or heard or seen, um, there are so many great resources now, so many great resources. Please, please, by all means, reach out um, and let someone know that you're hurting, you know, if that's how you choose to maybe process it and you think, gee, you know, I, I'm not feeling like I need to be here anymore. Um, reach out to somebody because we do care. People care. Um, and a lot of times you hear the people that are left behind are like, wow, I, I didn't know. I had no idea. And they say that a lot about suicide. People that die by suicide they don't tell anybody because they just want to go. They just want to leave. Um, and so anyway, I wanted to touch on that as well. So the next room, it isn't sad. I don't feel death is sad. It is dinner conversation for me. I feel like we have to get to it. We have to talk about it. We have to make it a daily thing because if we face the fact that we're only here for a little short amount of time, and then we transcend and we go elsewhere, um, why not be, you know, make it the best life experience possible? And why not talk about it? Because if you talk about death, then it kind of allows you to live a little deeper, a little richer, a little more meaningful when you understand that you're not going to be here forever. Um, and I do not believe that we fade to black. There's we're energy forms, and we just transfer energy. And um, not that I'm looking forward to the day that I do that, although I have no fear of it. I still want to. Uh, I got some things I want to do on this side. I I like being in my earthly vessel, and I still have a lot of things to accomplish with my children, and I'm hoping for grandchildren. And all kinds of wonderful things like marriages of my children and and all the good, happy, yummy stuff that comes with being human. Um, and I dig my husband too, which is nice. So thank you so much for listening to The Next Room. It's going to be a really exciting year. Um, I do want to tell you about a course that uh, I have designed alongside a dear friend of mine, The Grave Woman. Um, Joelle and I met years ago. And the moment we met, it was sort of like that you, you, you moment. You know, when you meet someone and you just feel like you've known them for a very, very long time and you love their energy and you just, you just have this vibe like, yeah, you know, you and I were meant to be, we were meant to be friends. We were meant to be connected and we both had that feeling. And so we sort of just tucked it away. Life went on. And then flash forward two years later, she and I had a conversation and we just said, why not? Why not create a course, make it super affordable for people, individuals through your podcast or through your book or through her website, The Grave Woman, put together a course about connecting with our loved ones in do, 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 the next room. So Joelle and I have put together a course. 
It launches on February 17th. It is only January of 2023, so you have plenty of time to sign up. Uh, we would love you to join us. We're going to do it via Zoom. Um, we also will have all kinds of cool little things that you can download. Uh, we'll have prompts for you. We'll have meditations for you. Um, you'll be able to ask us questions. And we're going to share our practice of what works for us and show you what works for us and kind of, you know, just kind of do that whole thing. Uh, so many people have been curious about how to connect. And so we're going to share what we do, what works for us, and you have to put in the work as well. So if you want to learn how to do this and you want to um, educate yourself about it, there's so many great resources. And so the two of us have been actively working with the other side for a while now. So we want to share that with you. So it's called ALIGN. The acronym is ASKING listening, inviting guidance from the next room. So a line, you can go to thegravewoman.com, click on courses. It's the first course that comes up. Or you can go to my website. It's janeasherrainey.com. And there's a little button there that says align and you click there and it will take you again to sign up for the course. So we hope to see you there. It's uh, February 17th. We chose February. We're both Pisces. We're both little fish, and um, we just thought that was a really perfect time to do it right before our birthdays, and uh, we're very excited about it. And we don't know where it's going to take us or our collaboration um, in the future, but we really have um, we have quite a connection, and we're hoping that you will enjoy it and share in it by aligning with us in the new year. So happy 2023. I wish you prosperity, uh, good health, laughter, uh, you know, get outside, do some good breathing, drink your water, get your rest, you know, hug people. And I mean, hug them, like put your heart right next to theirs and pull them into a bear hug. And um, and thank you. Thank you for listening to The Next Room. Thank you for the ratings. Thank you for the purchases of our beautiful book. And I am writing The Next Room, too, uh, with my mom. As my mother would say, if I would get cracking, I would have it done. So Jane needs to get working. And uh, Jane needs to get quiet and listen. So I am going to do that. Thanks again for listening to The Next Room. Uh, big props to Mind Body Spirit FM. That is the wonderful network I broadcast with. And thank you to Tony Ficini. Tony Ficini, the producer extraordinaire out of Detroit. I really am uh, so grateful to Tony. He puts everything together and makes it perfect. So thanks again for listening to The Next Room with Jane Asher. I will talk to you again very soon with all kinds of great guests in the new year. Thanks again.